Let's keep <laughs> go back keeps happening. Hey everybody, I think we are live now. This is Bridget Danner with Women's Wellness Collab Collaborative and Dr. Carrie Jones with uh, the Dutch Test, talking about the Dutch Test today. Mm -hmm. It's just like just turned to be 12 o'clock here on the, on the West Coast. So um, maybe not, not sure how many people are on, but if you can hear us, and do you want to say hi, Carrie? Hi. <laughs> I'm excited to be one. here. Yep, it works. <laughs> Uh, if you can just say on the chat that you hear us, that would be fantastic. Um, and yeah, we'll keep the chat open for, you know, comments and questions. We'll, I'll kind of wait for a break in the conversation to take them. But, you know, anything as we see some themes building, we can take questions. There's usually also like a 45 second delay. So um, if we're chatting back and forth. Hi, Shauna. Thank you. Uh, if we're chatting back and oh, forth, yeah. sometimes you miss, like, we'll be a little delay till we get to you. Cool. So, let me see. I'm just going to go check and see, see how many people are on. Carrie, do you want to get us started with just some of the basics? What's the company you work for? What's the test we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about the Dutch test today, which is not a test to determine if you are of Dutch origin. It is an acronym. It stands for Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones. And so we're going to talk all things dried urine testing, and then we're going to get into fancy stuff like metabolized cortisol and estrogen metabolites and androgen metabolites and pathways to see which way your male and female patients are headed and um, if it's healthy and safe and what you can do about it. So we're going to touch awesome. on some cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to learn a few things. I'm sure it's funny. You sent me what you wanted to talk about. I was like, she's such a clinician. She wants to just talk <laughs> about the test and all its details. And I'm like, well, we have to talk about business. So <laughs> right. let's That's do a little quick business over you too. So uh, the theme, uh, you know, I'm not sure who ended up signing up for this webinar, but the theme was to be for practitioners. Mm -hmm. And you and I were discussing for before the call, depending on what type of practitioner you are, you sort of get a different kind of level of access to uh, the Dutch test. So tell us, tell us more about that. Absolutely. So b practitioners, everyone signs up at the same site, www.dutchtest.com. And then um, we have what's called your typical account. If you're a licensed healthcare practitioner, you went to an accredited school, you're a doctor, you're an acupuncturist, you're a you know registered dietitian, um, things like that. Then you, um, when you sign up, you uh, have to send in your credentials, just like other labs or supplement companies, send in a copy of your license. And then you can order kits. And, and we do have, um, um, which I can touch on later too, but we do have a sign-on special, especially for part of this podcast. So our Dutch Complete Kit, which is where everything, you get all your hormones, all your cortisols, everything, melatonin, um, is normally $250. And for being part of this podcast, you can purchase, pre-purchase up to five of them 50% off. So they're only $125, which is really nice. And then for those practitioners who are maybe more of a, um, a health coach um, or a nutrition counselor, uh, but not, not so much licensed, but we have something called a vendor account, which is where you still sign up and you, you, know, you, you still um, have access to everything on the website, all the free videos, uh, but the results are instead being sent to you as the practitioner due to HIPAA, they're sent to directly to the patient. And so it's just a little bit different, but it's the same website that everybody signs up at, dutchtest.com. Okay, and then you told me if someone's in this vendor account, if they're not licensed, they can't get the oral like descriptions. Of exactly, unfortunately, yeah. So we do we call it technical support. So um, the any of the email help support, the phone support uh, is for, are for licensed practitioners. Those who are in the vendor account, uh, unfortunately, don't have access to that. But they do have access to all the videos and podcasts such as this. Um, to help. And, or okay. if they find somebody, you know, that's the other thing, a lot of um, health coaches and work with or work in practices or know people who are willing to co-sign. So if you're working with a chiropractor who's willing to co-sign for you, then um, you move out of the vendor account into a regular account. And then we can help you quite a bit because you have a co-signer. And, and we try to help with that as well. So we try to, you know, give you your options if for, for um, 
your listeners who are health coaches or nutrition counselors and not licensed, we give you some options of where you can head and how we can maybe help you. Okay. We, don't want, we don't want you floundering, but unfortunately, uh, the tech support is you have to be a licensed practitioner. Yeah, and um, there's a couple questions coming up that I have right. to for that. So, but, but yeah, I, mean, I know it's frustrating if you're a coach and you can't access labs the same way, but it, it's sort of the way it is. I mean, I'm really thankful I have an acupuncture license because it lets me get a bunch of <laughs> labs, which is a little silly. It's not really my scope of practice, but it's just sort of the way the world works. Uh, and I'm a, somebody's asking about being an FDN and, and I'm an FDN. Yes. And if I were only an FDN, I couldn't you get could. I, I, So I FD, would have a gender account. Believe it or not. So the FDN group has, um, okay. they have a doctor. They have a, an MD, MD, DO, Dr. Pilecki. I forget what he is. He co-signs for everybody in the FDN group. So if you are an FDN, you qualify as a normal, regular account. Yeah. You can get text. You can email him with questions, no problem. So FDN is a, okay. is a special um, oh. group, and they've organized that within themselves. So we do encourage other groups, you know, who have similar credentials, similar, um, you know, acronyms at the end of their name. You know, if you can find one co-signer for all of you, just like the FDN group oh. did, we are okay, okay with that. That's a good point. Totally that's a good okay. point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the, I was a little confused about this too. Do they get? Did the vendor account, can they get the 125 for the they, first Sort time? of, sort of. So the, okay. the, the 250, the cost for the Dutch complete is 250 for the regular account. Um, if you order, if a patient orders direct off our website, it's, it is 399. So there's, we do give a break to practitioners, of course, like other labs. If you're a vendor account, we do what we call a coupon code generator. So we generally work with you, find it, get a coupon. Um, and then your patient orders the kit, puts in the coupon code that's specific to you as the health coach or nutrition counselor, and then they get quite a big discount. So it's not oh, quite 250, okay. but it's close. Okay, so a vendor yeah. account can't really pre-order the test at 125. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm a big fan of that 125 package. I got that when I started. <laughs> yeah, you know, I ran it on myself. I ran it on some people mm -hmm. at my work because I was like, hey, guys, it's half off. Why don't you learn something? I learned something. And, uh, yeah, right. we the, did the, it that way. Licensed practitioners, just like you said, they can you can buy up to five for new providers at 50% off. Yeah, and Irene was asking, yeah, that's for you, that's U.S. dollars. Um, US. Yeah, it is very easy to send these, I've found, internationally because they're just a small envelope. So mm -hmm. uh, if someone's with a vendor account, could they get an international? Absolutely, ship? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay, no problem. okay. Yeah. okay thanks. And we, we took care of all this there. Well, <laughs> and for Canadians, um, I, we know that Canadian and U.S. dollars, you know, it's up and down. So we have a very, we have a set Canadian price, which... I can't remember off the top of my head, but the, can, our, the Canadian does not fluctuate, which a lot of people complain about um, the day to day. So we have a one set Canadian price. It's that for the next rest of the year. So it's very easy for Canadians. Oh, nice. OK, cool. All right. So let's see. So that's a little bit about ordering and signing up. Um, and we will can ask more questions maybe later as we go about that. Um, but let's get into the, the test itself. You said briefly what it is, the stride urine test. Um, Carrie, also, it might be too late now, but you're welcome to screen share too if you want to show. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I will as we get talking talk about the test. I have some stuff okay. I can show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's see here. Let's, we talked a little bit about what it is. Maybe let's talk about why it's unique and sort of how it compares to a saliva test, which in, in FDN is the first one we learn about. They, I don't, they, they don't have the Dutch yet in the basic training, although maybe they're adding that. But yeah, why, why is this test special? What's different? How does it compare? <laughs> why are we cool? <laughs> exactly. So, um, well, first of all, it's very different collection. It's dried urine. So your clients and patients will uh, collect on filter paper, small pieces of filter paper, first thing in the morning. They'll do a different filter paper two hours later a different filter paper around dinner and a different one before bed. If they wake up in the middle of the night, they'll do a fifth one then as well. Let it dry for 24 hours, put it in the envelope that's included and mail it back. So collection is a big one, super easy. If you have patients who don't like to get their blood drawn, have a hard time with, with spitting, they, maybe they have um, 
you know, like Sjogren's or, you know, certain conditions that they just can't generate a lot of saliva, then it, everyone everyone urinates. And so it's a pretty straightforward test on collection. Um, and then on top of that, the type of results you get because it's a urine test are much more in depth and broad and comprehensive. So you get, we call them metabolites. You get your estrogen metabolites. So you, not only do you get your normal estrogens, your e estrone, your estradiol, your estriol, but you get the pathway, your phase one and phase two detox. So if you have a woman or man who is experiencing estrogen dominant symptoms, if they're, you're um, concerned about cancer risk, then we tell you where in phase one are they going? Are they going the healthy two hydroxy pathway is what we call it. Or are they going down the four hydroxy pathway, which is the naughty pathway? And then after that, are they getting through phase two detox? So can the body actually get rid of them and, and move them on out into the urine? Um, and then other pathways, of course, are stool, but or a urine test. So you now you can see like, okay, they, their estrogens looks like this. And then here's their risk factors for their phase one and phase two. We also do what's called androgen metabolism. So people are worried about testosterone and DHEA when it comes to sex drive and energy, but testosterone and DHEA can cause a lot of problems with acne, um, with, you know, facial hair growth in places we surely don't want as women, hair loss on our heads, you know, anger and irritation. And by looking at these urine metabolites we can pick up which the pathway oh my gosh you go down the alpha pathway no wonder you have all this acne no wonder you're losing hair and we can do things to help negate that and then third and fourth that's the biggest thing that sets us apart from saliva of course is our adrenal test um, we do the free cortisol just like saliva but then we also do what's called metabolized cortisol and by knowing your metabolized cortisol you answer the question, can you even make cortisol in the first place? What's your total cortisol production? And we also look at cortisone, which is inactive. So how much can you make? How much is free and active? And how much is getting deactivated? And it tells a much bigger picture or a much better story for your patient so you can treat appropriately. You know, sometimes we put people on adrenal support and they don't get better. Or in fact, maybe they feel worse or they have worse anxiety or they feel better for a couple of weeks and then they say... And I feel like it's not really working anymore. And so by pinpointing, going a little bit deeper with uh, all the cortisol markers that we offer, you can you can dive deep and you can really yeah. help. Yeah, I think I mentioned on the summit and I'll mention it again here that you sometimes see that cortisol like conversion. I don't know if it's from total to free as being like a thyroid Problem? Yeah. 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 Okay. You can pick up other problems on, um, you can't on our urine test and because you have that big picture. Um, so what happens is uh, I'll touch on this with thyroid. So, and patients with, with true thyroid problems, maybe they know it or, or patients who they don't know it yet. Um, when the thyroid slows down, when they're hypothyroid, you know, it slows everything down. It slows metabolism down. It slows hair growth down. It slows GI motility down. It also slows down cortisol production and it slows down metabolism of cortisol through the liver. And so on a, as a result, on the Dutch test, we have this very distinct pattern where we say, you know, you should probably have a full thyroid panel got done because it seems to be affecting your adrenal glands. And as we know, the thyroid and the adrenals are like best friends. So if one's not happy, usually the other one's not happy and we can pick up on that. Yeah, yeah, you got you got me to do a full thyroid panel, which <laughs> ended up being very revealing. And you know, yeah, as we know with clients, you you know, it, it's a little bit sad to know that there's further down the rabbit hole to go, but it's also very helpful. Um, mm -hmm. so they're not Especially if been struggling a long time, right? How many of your patients have been maybe to several practitioners, or they've been dealing with symptoms for a long, long time, and nobody can figure it out, or they're told they're normal, you're normal, it's all in your head, there's nothing wrong with you, and yet they feel very not normal. So getting this yeah. going deeper can be really eye-opening. Yeah, there's a lot of little bits, and we'll talk about more of them with the Dutch test that you can learn and pick up on, and the, and the client really enjoys it for making that, that full picture. Um, you know, I've been learning more about cortisol and is it really truly a good marker of fatigue? And that's <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think it's an interesting question. And again, I like this test because it's not just a cortisol test and it's not telling right. you what phase you're in. It's just sort of comparing and you're seeing how you're at different times of the day. So I'm using it more of just like a, a little bit like of a symptom management to like, hey, look, we can see that you're 
you know, high here and that you're feeling, you know, X here and like mm-hmm. maybe help you calm down at this time of day. And, and so, yeah, I think it, it, it's cool how it plays into so many aspects. Yeah. And I hear all the time cortisol, maybe, maybe cortisol is high when you expected it to be low, you know, maybe fatigue is their primary concern and their cortisol is really high on a Dutch test. And you think, well, that's not right. They're really tired. I said, yeah, but it's exhausting. Cort- cortisol does several things. Cortisol fights inflammation. Cortisol deals with your blood sugar. Cortisol handles your circadian rhythm. And and if if you have a lot of imbalances, if you have infections and SIBO and gut stuff and Lyme and Epstein Barr and Hashimoto's, I mean, you your immune system is on all the time, and that is exhausting. So you can still be tired and still have high cortisol. You don't have to have bottomed out cortisol to equal fatigue. And then on top of it, all those things I just said are tiring. They cause a lot of fatigue. You yeah. know, Hashimoto's and Epstein Barr and Lyme and SIBO. I mean, that's the that fatigue is a big symptom for those things. Yeah, I, you, I'm glad we're talking. I was thought, oh, should I open this can of worms? But I'm glad that I did because <laughs> other people are wondering it too. It's like, is it so simple to just say cortisol equals? Um, so let's talk in a minute about the oxidative yep. stress and melatonin. But Steve had a question, which he said, why would alternative pathways be expressed in the first place? I think he's asking, uh, and you can say, Steve, if you mean something else, like why it, why it would be like a inflammatory estrogen pathway be activated or like, a, you know, inflammatory testosterone pathway be activated. It's, and I'll answer that if that is yeah, not your question. I'm going to say that. We'll try that. We'll go with that one. Right in. Um, <laughs> let's take, let's take testosterone and DHEA. So there's an alpha pathway and a beta pathway. The alpha pathway is the one again that causes acne and facial hair and um, hair loss in women. It causes male pattern baldness in men and and enlarged prostate, um, BPH, benign prostate um, hypertrophy. So um, now you can genetically be an alpha person or a beta person. There's just that enzyme genetically in your body may just be upregulated or downregulated, but you can be pushed as well. So let's say in men, with a lot of inflammation, borderline diabetic, their blood sugar, insulin's not so good, they're gaining belly fat, that can push an alpha pathway just just Mm -hmm. by lifestyle alone. And so now they went from having no male pattern baldness or very little to accelerated. Or they go from, I never had a problem with my prostate and now I feel like I'm waking up more often in the middle of the night. At the same time, they're much more inflamed or the inflammatory process has started impacting these pathways. The, the blood sugar is getting worse. The insulin is not being managed. And so you can definitely do it to yourself based on lifestyle. And it's the same mm-hmm. with estrogens. Um, the, the, um, we talk about the 2-16 ratio when, for some people who are looking at the phase one estrogen markers. Now, the 16 used to be considered the bad pathway, cancerous pathway. And it turns out it's, it's not so cancerous, but it can cause estrogen dominant symptoms. Women who prefer the 16 pathway maybe have heavy periods or a lot of cramps, breast tenderness. Um, and the 16 pathway is also increased with inflammation. So you may have a woman with SIBO or gut bugs or, um, um, you know, poor dietary choices. She should not eat gluten and she does. It's very inflammatory. And as a result, her 16 pathway goes up her estrogen goes down that pathway. And now she says, not only do I feel these symptoms over here, but I'm also having tender breasts and PMS and heavy periods. And it just, it, it, it's inflammation can push those things. Genetics can too. Okay. It's sort of like epigenetics or nature versus mm -hmm. nurture. Yeah. Like for me, I'm, I, I push pathways to make acne real good. And (laughs) But it's way better than when I didn't eat well, you know, mm-hmm. when I just sort of ate whatever I wanted. I was always making tons of oil, but like now it's under control. But then again, I can see when my body, like around my period, when there's a lot of load on my liver, I can see mm-hmm. it come up again. So, so yeah, yeah, I guess in a perfect world or perfectly healthy body, those pathways would be minimized. Hopefully. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we talked a bit about cortisol earlier and it's sort of, I don't know, counter hormone is melatonin and that's tested on your test. It is. Now, yeah. Sleeping is a huge issue for people. Oh my gosh. And sleep is so critical, right? It's what we tell our patients all the time. If they don't sleep, then they miss out on all the growth and repair and wake up feeling even crummier. And fatigue may not be a cortisol issue. It may be just a poor sleep issue and they wake up with sick cells. 
So on the Dutch test, we look at the pattern of cortisol through the day. So you do get the cortisol before bed and then we do test melatonin. And so if you find your melatonin is really low um, and you're waking up a lot or you can't fall asleep, um, then it may be a real problem. And one of the things I like to remind people of is, you know, melatonin is is made primarily in the gut. You know, the large majority is made there. Obviously, some is made in the pineal gland. But a lot is made in the in the gut, and it's it's a pro, it's a very um, potent antioxidant in the body. So for those people who are experiencing a lot of gut issues, may find their melatonin is increasing because of um, a counter effect to the inflammation in the gut. But it also comes from serotonin in the brain. So if you have a depressive personality, or you have those patients who are really struggling um, with depression, and their melatonin is low, it, it may really go hand in hand. And if you support serotonin. Um, and you get their sleep hygiene under control. You make sure they're off their phones at night and, you know, winding down and, and um, not having sugar and alcohol before bed. Then the, you can help to reset that, reset that circadian rhythm and get their melatonin up at night and their cortisol down at night and get much better sleep. But we can see it okay. on the Dutch test. We can look and go, oh, there's the problem. I see it right there and so work on it. You might have said this earlier, but just to clarify, like, do you sometimes see that um, the melatonin looks okay, but just the cortisol is just too high? So that's mm -hmm. why you're not sleeping? Okay. Because yeah, sometimes I see people who are like, who I would have expected <laughs> melatonin to be lower, but mm -hmm. it looks okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And and, and some people... Worry. Go ahead. I was going to say some people, like just like you said, their cortisol is high, but it doesn't quite affect their melatonin. Um, but it's kind of a ratio, you know, cortisol will always still win, even if melatonin is in normal range. Usually sleep is okay. still a problem. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Um, Janine or Janine had a question about, and this is a good a good oh segue to say, can you see the chat too? Okay. Yeah, I can. <laughs> yeah, about like, what should we not take if we're hormone testing? That's a great, question. That's a great question. It depends it what depends. you as the practitioner want to test. So if you want your patients on supplements and hormones, keep them on them for the Dutch test. If you want a baseline, then you do have to take them off. Now, what they're taking depends. For example, adaptogens. Let's say you have somebody on ashwagandha, maca, rhodiola. Now, the half-life of those herbs is very quick. It's out of the body in 24 hours. The effect takes weeks to wear off. So if you've had somebody on adaptogens for several months, it may take a month or more to get back to a baseline level. If they're on hormones, if they're on just, you know, they're on progesterone, progest creams, any hormone cream can sit in the skin. So they do have to stop um, creams for at least three to four weeks. And that's across any testing, serum testing, saliva testing, urine testing will say that creams have to stop three to four weeks. Oral hormones are sublingual. So people who do like oral progesterone, sublingual progesterone, oral estrogen, um, 24 to 48 hours, very quick out of the body, oh, okay. in and out. Okay. And the effect is not usually long lasting in our experience. DHEA okay. is the same. If it's a topical DHEA, three to four weeks. If it's an oral capsule supplement you bought at the store or from a, one of our great reputable supplement companies, it's usually out of the system in 48 hours. Okay. So mm -hmm. Janine was asking about CBD oil, which I, is like anti-inflammatory, right? It is. It How can be. And now, unfortunately, um, I don't know enough about CBD oil and the effect of hormones because if you don't write it on your form, you know, when you, when you do a lab, you have to fill all your information out, your name, your date of birth, your address. And a lot of labs include, how do you feel? And you check the boxes and you write what medications you're on. Well, not many people will admit <laughs> that they're on CBD oil. And so if they don't uh, write it down, um, then we can't correlate on the test to say, oh my gosh, you know, these last 10 people have been on CBD oil and here's what they look like. Whereas everybody feels free to write down thyroid and everybody writes down they're on ashwagandha and everybody writes down they're taking, you know, whatever, vitamin C and fish oil. So we see those correlations, but we, if, you, if you don't write down CBD, um, we, then it's hard, harder for us to correlate it mm. with testing. But okay. it's quite an emerging field. And so I'm hoping um, to learn a whole lot more of it. And even though it's, I mean, CBD itself is legal, but cannabis in general is is where our lab is based in Portland, Oregon. And um, cannabis is legal in Oregon, but even still, nobody wants to write it down. Nobody wants to admit 
And so it's harder yeah, for us to see. Yeah, people are afraid, like, where is that information mm -hmm. being stored type of thing. I, I, exactly. can, I can see that. You know, I think after having this conversation, I think I'm going to try to leave people on stuff more. Um, Ada has a question about that, too. But people hate to come off their stuff for a month. Right. They right. really don't like it. But if there, there's a reason they're seeing you. So even if, if it, like, I think we should experiment in my business about keeping people on and say, look, you're on all this stuff and still da 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 is going mm -hmm. on. So yeah, I, I, yeah. So Ad, I think there's different, like you said, there's different ways to kind of play it. Ada asks about Vitex, Black Cohosh and Tribulus. You mentioned the adaptogens take off for a month. Right. So, on? and Vitex is very similar. So Vitex, um, because of its long lasting effects on the HPO axis, I would usually recommend stopping it a full cycle. So four weeks. Okay. Um, um, okay. The black cohosh and black cohosh, in my experience, I find it's a little faster. I mean, you can always still say the, the four weeks applies. Black cohosh is probably more like one to two weeks. Um, okay. And tribulus is, you, tri depends how you use tribulus. Some people just use tribulus very short term to encourage ovulation. Some people are using it all month long as an adaptogen. Um, so if it's all month long, like an adaptogen, then you want it, they have to go off of it for four weeks. Oh, okay. If they're using it short term just to encourage ovulation, you it's, they can, it's, it's out of the system quickly. Okay. So Sequoia is asking about iodine, which I, I don't think you have to come off. I don't think I don't so either. either. No. Okay. Cause it's a more nutrient. So Sequoia, we're talking about like pretty specific hormone modulators or hormones. So yeah, I don't, we don't usually take anybody off of vitamins, or minerals, or fish oil, yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Which is fine. And, yeah, Janine is saying the CBD oil is a great, yeah. Yeah, I'm wanting oh, yeah. to learn yeah. more about that, yeah. too. I'm hoping to have it, on, of it. on the podcast. But I don't know how it affects, court. I mean, I, you know, I don't have any um, one-to-one -one correlation to say. On the test. On yeah, the test. Well, I think we kind of covered, you know, you could come off if you want to see what life is like off, or you can stay on and. See how things are now. Maybe this would be a good time to talk about the one-day test versus the month-long option for women. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the one-day test, one test, if you have a woman who has a normal-ish 28-day cycle, she will test on roughly day 19, 20, or 21. So you want to test her in her luteal phase or luteal phase, depending where you're from, how you say it. Um, and, and it's the same for any company. Serum, saliva, urine. 19, 20, 21 is pretty standard. Now, if you have a woman who is maybe experiencing symptoms all month long, difficulty getting pregnant, um, menstrual migraines, issues with ovulation, and if issues around PMS, um, maybe she has her ovaries but had a partial hysterectomy. So she cycles but doesn't bleed. So she's not really sure where she is or what's happening. Then we recommend what's called the cycle mapping. The cycle mapping is when they urinate on a piece of filter paper starting about day seven of their cycle every day until they get their period. And then we graph out. So it's a, it's a big graph and it shows the up and down of their estrogen and progesterone, hopefully if they have that up and down, um, as opposed to the one day, just a single number. This is your estrogen on day 19. This is your progesterone on day 21, whatever. Um, and so it's really cool. So I can then pinpoint, oh my gosh, Maybe your ovulation is not that robust. Oh my gosh, you do not get the rise in estrogen in your follicular phase. This is why you don't ovulate. Oh my gosh, your estrogen crashes. This is why you have a migraine. And I can graph it out and look at it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And what's the price difference on that? So this Dutch Complete that we've been talking about is 250. And then the cycle mapping is 325 US dollars. Um, if they want to combine the two tests together, they want all the estrogen information all uh, the phase one and phase two detox, they want um, all the cortisol, melatonin, things like that, then it's 425 US dollars. Oh, okay. So yeah, I got you now. Okay. Yep. So okay. for a hundred bucks more, we can put them together. Okay. So we talked a bit about the conditions for the cycle mapping. Maybe we can just talk in general about because, you know, cases that would benefit from either, either type of test. You want to just spitball that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all, all of the above. If you have a hormonally crazy patient, male or female, <laughs> test their hormones. Do the Dutch test. So I explain it's great for all things estrogen dominant symptoms PMS, migraines, breast tenderness, heavy periods, endometriosis, adenomyosis, fibroids, 
Um, it's great for your thyroid patients. You know, hormones, adrenals, and thyroid, they're, they're best friends. They all communicate all day long. Male health, male issues, erectile dysfunction, you know, weight loss problems, fertility with men's health as well, uh, fatigue. I mean, there's just so many things that come up that hormones really have such an impact on when they're out of balance. And um, by looking at that inflammation, which we've talked about, we have an, an um, inflammatory marker. It's an, actually an oxidative stress marker now called 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine, 8-OHDG. So it's a big fancy word for how much oxidative stress do you have causing DNA damage? For So for men and women who have a lot of maybe chronic disease states or who are maybe at a cancer risk or in a cancer state, we can run this marker. It's found in urine and um, give us an idea of how much DNA damage is happening in the body. So it's a really neat marker until it's elevated and then it's a scary marker. <laughs> But it's, okay. it's, it's reflective of your own antioxidant system. And so if your antioxidant system is failing you, there are so many antioxidants out in, in the world that we can use to help support it, either in diet, you know, our leafy green vegetables, our, you know, all our vegetables that are colorful, our reds, our oranges, our purples, our greens, um, and then supplements, our natural antioxidants like melatonin and glutathione and vitamin C, things like that to help support um, that system, get it back in balance. So is this marker specifically one, because I was just learning to, I'm going to be all contrary today. I was just learning that some of oxidative stress is sort of a normal way to clean, you know, clean the body. So is this test specifically going to, like you said, DNA damage, like, or is it the level that's the problem or it's, is it it's the level? So it's not, zero, like, okay. it's not, the range is not zero. zero. Okay. The range go, it, there is a range. And so okay. to accommodate for the fact that, there is always a little bit of cancer in our body and there is always a little bit of DNA, you know, repair happening. There has to be, and the cancer is getting killed and the DNA is getting repaired. And so we have to accommodate for that because that's just like you said, it's totally that's normal. Fair. The okay. problem is when it's excessive and the body's having a tough time accommodating for it. Okay. I can't react. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Deirdre is asking, and I think I, ha I have an answer to this, but you can, she's asking, should you come off nature thyroid or synthroid? I yeah, recommend it. No, yeah, for mm -mm. prescribed, and it's not going to change what you do, like so to speak. Like, um, I mean, it's not a thyroid test in particular. I think if right. you wanted to manage those medications, you could run a thyroid panel, and you don't want to take someone off their medication, right? It's unless you're the I prescribing doctor, 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 and you, yeah, and you feel you real know good what about you're doing, or, or you have a reason, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, otherwise, no, yeah. don't don't take them off their prescribed meds. Yeah. 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 Can, yeah. Like Go some ahead. medications we sometimes suggest delaying, such as um like maybe ADD medications people will take first thing in the morning. I might say, Hey, do your first test, do your test two hours later, and then take your ADD medication because it can falsely elevate your free cortisol, you know, their their mm. stimulants. Unless you want to know what you're like on ADD medication if you take Adderall first thing in the morning and you want to know what it does to your cortisol stay on it Okay, but I don't okay. ever recommend stop medication. Okay. just delay sometimes Okay, Carrie, I'm gonna ask you a little bit more about the cortisol markers and mm -hmm. then in the meantime if anybody wants to ask questions about a case or you know, some of the technicalities about learning how to read a Dutch test, um, feel free. So you said you're measuring total cortisol, free cortisol, and then is the cortisol in the, which is the one that's the bound cortisol or the one that can't be used? So cortisone, cortisone's inactive. Yeah. Okay. So cortisone. inactive. Okay. There's, so a, that's the one. there's an enzyme that inactivates or reactivates cortisol and cortisone. Okay. Tell us about yeah. that one. So um, the body always makes cortisol first. That's, that's its preferential method. And then when it wants to deactivate it, there's a little enzyme called 11-beta-HSD, and that will deactivate it to cortisone, 11-beta-HSD2, I should say. And cortisone's inactive. It's kind of um, dead in the water. It's 90 plus percent inactive. And so when the body is trying to get you to slow down when you're, when you're just after an illness, where you're trying to recover, when you're burning the candle at both ends and the body says, okay, I'm done. We, I'm going to force you to slow down now. Then oftentimes it will push it to cortisone. Certain glands in the body will prefer cortisone. For example, the saliva glands, believe it or not, have a lot, a high level of cortisone 
production ability there. The kidneys have a high level of cortisone production and it's protective against damage. For example, if you have a lot of cortisol swooping through to your kidneys, that can cause high blood pressure and a lot of kidney damage. And so the kidneys go, nope, stop and convert to cortisone to deactivate it. The salivary glands do it because you have um, mineral corticoid receptors there. So it's to protect the mineral corticoid receptors from cortisol assault, so to speak. And so, but as a system in the whole, in the whole body, we measure what is the body prefer cortisone or cortisol. And if it prefers cortisone, we know stress is a real big problem or illness, acute illness. And so treatment is different. You may have really low free cortisol. Maybe you did a saliva test like FDN teaches and the cortisol is very, very low. And you think, oh my gosh, my adrenal glands don't make cortisol. I must stimulate the heck out of it. And then you do a Dutch test and you find out, oh no, actually I make a lot of cortisol. It's all getting deactivated to cortisone. Production is not the problem. It's inactivation. And that's a little bit different. So what is it in, in, is it inactivating because there's too much cortisol and that can cause some damage? It could. It or, depends on the site that it's at. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's different ways to read that if there's a higher cortisol. Yeah. Different ways to read that. Now in the reverse, you can convert cortisone into cortisol. So you can reactivate it. And oh. the number one tissue that does that is our fat tissue. It's so sad. Oh. So the body generate even more cortisol than you're making from the adrenal glands by reactivating cortisone and fat tissue. So the fat tissue can become its own little cortisol production factory. And then when fat cells see cortisol, they get bigger. And so we get that, that, that spare tire around the middle. Okay. And, and so your cortisone is the average in the day? Your cortisone. So cortisone score. doesn't actually follow a circadian rhythm. It's okay. we call it a shadow reflection of cortisol, it, because it, they bounce back and forth okay. depending what's going on. So sometimes okay. you need more cortisone. Sometimes you need more cortisol. For example, if you are getting to two o'clock in the afternoon and your sugar crashing, you may find your cortisol goes up and your cortisol zone goes down because cortisol is going to help you get through a sugar crash. So you may find that they split. Mm. Protective, okay. right? Protective. Okay. The body is using cortisol to get you through your afternoon. Okay. And Irene is asking, can she use like the four times a day of the, your sample with Dutch, similar to how you would on a salivary one? Yes. Um, okay. Similar in that we follow the circadian rhythm, the pathway, but... Um, Urine is a slight delay because saliva is like blood. When you split in a tube or get your blood drawn, it's right in the moment. But the cortisol is has to go from the kidney to the bladder and then out onto the uh, on the filter paper. So when you when you get up in the morning and do the very first urine test, it's actually reflection of everything through the night because it's everything that's been sitting in your bladder that comes out on the filter paper. And then you collect two hours later, and that reflects the last two hours. So we call it more area under the curve as opposed to right at that moment. So you get oh, okay. more of this whole day look as opposed to what are you doing right at three o'clock? It's like, well, what are you okay. doing for the last, you know, from one to three o'clock in the Dutch results? Mm, I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. That's helpful for me. And then you can kind of look back and say, huh, well, maybe this is what your body was going through. Right. And, and over a, corporal, a couple of, exactly. So waking, if your waking point on the Dutch test is high, that actually reflects through the night. And so you may, they can say your cortisol is rising faster than it should. That's why you wake up at four in the morning and can't fall back asleep or okay. what have you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to share a bit about how I can see this working for practitioners and then we can take some more questions. And then uh, Carrie, yeah. did you have anything else that you I was going to just show what, for those who don't know, I was going to show what the Dutch test, I'll share screen and show what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. You can set that up while I chat. Yeah. Um, yeah we've talked about health coaches and can you run it and this and that. And uh, if you missed the beginning, go back and listen to some of the particulars about how health coaches can or cannot, which type of account they can sign up for. But yeah, if you're in the FDN program, you can sign up because you're 
slightly supervised in a, in a way. So that, that worked out well. If you went to somewhere like IIN or wherever, maybe that's something you can talk to them about. Say, hey, I want, I want you guys to partner with the Dutch test so I can get access. Um, but if, if you don't have that, you might have to partner with a practitioner to help you get some interpretation or like Carrie said, you you can have you can get an account and just have the results sent to the practitioner to your patient and kind of learn on your own through the videos and that kind of thing or through a colleague. So there's there's lots of ways to go about it, and, and there can be benefits in partnering in life. You know, to you know, get your hands on you know get your hands on certain information or supplements or just for marketing purposes can be helpful to pair with the chiropractor or what have you. Anyways. Um, and the last thing I want to say, like we have some people in our, who are our clients who are health coaches and I'm always excited to have them on because I'm like, this is something you're, you know, a level of health coaching you don't know about, mm -hmm. but that has so much value and makes you different from the next health coach who is just like you getting stuck in certain places. Like, I don't know what they're doing. They've really improved their diet. They're going to bed on time. Why aren't they better? Now you have an option to get some answers. And I just have found like when you say you run labs, it's like people can hold on to that as being something real. Um, and they're often, you know, really willing to spend the extra money to get some real answers. So, yeah, I think it can be helpful. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take these couple quick questions and then we'll look at your um, – what other – Estrogens. I think we kind of talked about the sirene, the beanie, but you want to go over um, which the estrogens are and the estrogen metabolites. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, what I'll do is I'll oh, share. Oh, you can show that. Yeah, because yeah. I have it on. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure I can do this. Jennifer's asking for a little tutorial on how to read the results. So I think we'll, we're get, about to get that too, in a sense because um, we'll look at the test and see the results. Sequoia is asking, can you kind of split your 50% off, like get a few now and a couple later, or do you have to get all five at once? Hmm. Are you there? Yeah, you're getting there. I see your screen, but um, I mean, do, do you want to click on where your test is? Hold on. Let me try this okay, one more time. Okay. 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 I, I think you had it right. You just have to click on wherever you're holding your, have your test. All right, let's try it. Where is the test you want to show? I have it in a PowerPoint, just like a. Can you um, like minimize this browser yeah. and then go to your PowerPoint? Let's see here. I wonder if you select it to show. Let's see. Interesting. Okay, hold on. Why? Yeah, it's not a web. Oh wait, it's not a web page. Let's see here. I think it's just showing everything on your screen. So I, think I know. You minimize your browser and open up your PowerPoint. Like open right. up your PowerPoint and then. Get your screen share and then. Oh, that's this. a good idea. Let's try that. Oh, wait. Try and share screen share on. Man, oh, oh, there it is. You're right. Look at you. Bridget, you're so. <laughs> you learn these things the hard way, little by little. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So I'm just going to since it's working, I'm just going to leave it just like that, not touch anything. All right, so this is what the hormone part of the test looks like. Um, this is the hormone page. So for the person who asked what estrogen metabolites we look at, we follow the test results like a steroid pathway. So you just follow the black, green, red, and blue arrows as they go down. And that's the way a steroid pathway would work when your hormones are converting from one hormone into the next hormone. So oh, if we get up a little bit, hold on, oh, no. can you just? Pause and say that again. I don't know why it was going really well the whole other That's time. That's weird. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So you're starting okay. to say which estrogens and estrogen, estrogen metabolism. Yes. Okay. okay. So let me go. All right. Can you see where it says let's break it down? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in the upper left-hand corner, 
are the two progesterones. We look at what's called their progesterone metabolites, alpha and beta pregnanodiol. The reason we look at both the alpha and the beta, the beta is the most common in the male and female body, the most prevalent, but the alpha is the one that goes, crosses the blood brain barrier and helps touch on GABA for sleep and anxiety. So if you have a patient that's maybe going through menopause and says, I can't sleep as well as I used to, or my anxiety is really high, we look to the alpha dial to see what's going on. So there's a little mm. tip there. That's the bottom now, one? No, at the, at the bottom one, yeah, the bottom dial on the upper left-hand side. Okay. Now on the right side where it says estrogens, E1, E2, E3. So there's your, those are your main estrogens. And then underneath that are your phase one estrogen markers. Your two OH is at the bottom. Your four OH dial is in the middle. And your 16 OH dial is just above that. So there's a green arrow, a red arrow, and a blue arrow. That's your phase one detoxification. As you follow the arrows down to the lower left corner, that says part of phase two estrogen detox. So this is methylation, the act of methylation through the gene COMT, COMT. So this, so to answer the question, what markers for estrogen do we look at? We look at two, at four, and at 16 OH. And we look at two methoxy, which is part of phase two. So you can see the whole thing. Okay. Now, okay. the rest of them, we look at your androgens. So I have them listed. We look at DHEAS. We look at the beta pathway, which is called ETO calanolone. We look at the alpha pathway, which is called androsterone. And we look at testosterone. And so then I have on the left side, it says if you have high 5-alpha, which is your androsterone, then you will have more acne, hair loss, facial hair, mood swings, men get prostate issues, things like that. So this is how we follow the steroid pathway. Can you go back to the estrogen one? Yeah. Uh, Sally had a question about the gray arrow between the estradiol and the 16 OH. Great question. So technically, the body makes E1 and E2 and 16 OH converts primarily into estri estriol. Estradiol... Um, Oh, excuse me, and, and then estradiol converts into estriol. So estriol is a, is a dead-end estrogen. Once the body makes estriol, it gets rid of it. Mm, okay. Estriol does not convert nearly as much into the 16, but there's mixed research out there to show that maybe it does a little bit. Primarily, oh. 16 goes to estriol. So that's why we have it in gray, because the literature is a little gray area. <laughs> It fits. <laughs> it's a little fear. But yeah, when estriol is, it's a dead end. Once the body makes estriol for the most part, after that it gets excreted. Okay. She also had a question. Can you see her question? I can't. Once the screen's up, I can't. Okay. Uh, would a, I don't know what you're saying here, Sal. Pregnetidyl be high or low with GABA problems? I don't know if she means pregnetolone. Oh, the alpha pregnetidyl. Oh, you yeah, you're right. Low. Low with, low, GABA with low with GABA problems, yes. Oh, okay. Because it, yeah. it was earlier when you talked about progesterone and the alpha. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it'll be low. Okay. So then let's see the adrenal. This is the adrenal page. So you get your melatonin at the top. Um, you get – it's the adrenal page. We put DHEA back on here. Um, and then you'll see metabolized cortisol, free cortisol. We graph it out. On the left-hand side, you'll see your free cortisone in, in red letters. And then we tell you systemically on uh, the action of that enzyme I was talking about earlier, the 11 beta HSD. Um, it's, that's the one that flips cortisol and cortisone back and forth. So we tell you which, how active your enzyme is and which direction it prefers. Really helpful for women and men who have problems with weight loss, fat loss. Oh. If they have a high level of 11 beta HSD1, they're going to have a tougher time with weight loss because that enzyme is turned on in the fat tissue. Okay. Yeah. So that's what a test looks like. And there's some more pages that have like kind of text, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, but these you like these graphs. It seems like you prefer. Yes, if you want, I know, right? If you um, the actual literal numbers, then um, we we give like we just give by line estradiol, you know, line one estradiol, line two estrone, you know. So we just do a line. But I like the pictures. Most people um, understand and learn visually. And so if they can see on the dial, if it's high or low, and they can follow the black arrows moving down, like, oh, this dial is high, but this dial is low. This is not converting. Okay, what do I do? Mm. So it makes more logical sense. Just follow the arrows versus okay. just on a lined out Excel spreadsheet reading down the line. It's harder. <laughs> okay. Jennifer has a question about that weight loss that you just described the market. How, how do you fix it? How do you, right. How do you magically <laughs> fix that weight loss problem? <laughs> so there's, there are um, some helpful herbs actually. So if you do a test and you see that gauge that I showed and it's high on the cortisol side, which means that little enzyme is upregulated. Um, some herbs and research are things like um, skull cap, um, Zisophis, which I think is used a lot in Chinese medicine. Um, those are sort of three big ones that get used a lot. And you can use them in combo to try to help. You do have to be careful using them during the day. I tend to use them at night because they can make people sleepy. Relaxation is one of their other things. Oh, so, okay. Gold um, cap, that can be what else did you say? Zisophis? Zisophis. <laughs> Magnolia. Oh, I saw that. E-I-Z-I-P-H. U.S. U.S. Okay. U, U. Yeah. U.S. And, and Magnolia. Okay. You always no, have some interesting herb recommendations. I like to hear yours. <laughs> Magnolia. Be careful. The active ingredient in Magnolia is a Hinocchio, um, which is H-O-N-O-K-I-O-L. It looks like honokyol, but apparently the proper pronounce called honokyol. Mm -hmm. You want that to be a high percentage. So research oh. shows. So there are some products out there. I've, I have no affiliation, but a lot of people use Cortisol Manager from oh, ITI. Yeah. That's a nice I'm a big fan. And it has magnolia in it, but it's a, it's a, I think it's a 1% or 3%. And when we're going for fat loss, I like it. I like to look on at other companies for higher person and Nokia. Oh, I see. Nokia. <laughs> yeah. So oh, cortisol correct. manager works because it calms cortisol. Can you spell but it? Again? You gotta get that high percent. Yeah, H O N O K I O L. That's the active oh, okay. ingredient in Magnolia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Specific to how if, if it was a magic pill I would be doing this from my private island because I'd be so wealthy. But <laughs> yeah, <not. laughs> no, it's, just some good tips. it's hard when people are like doing the right stuff and not losing weight. So that's a good thing. right. It's well, crazy. and the other thing, the other thing people Correct. forget to look at. You want to look at for weight loss. You want to look at cortisol and DHEA. You know, you want to look at that. Are you androgenic? Or, uh, excuse me, anabolic or catabolic? Catabolic are cortisol dominant, and they tend to gain weight. And it's really hard mm -hmm. for them. You want to try to push them into an anabolic which is a DHEA testosterone sort of Sex heavy side inside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's an interesting little tidbit. Yeah. And if you are a practitioner who can get the reviews, like this is kind of fun stuff that mm -hmm. you get to ask about your particular case to carry. Um, My awesome. doctors on staff that are quite helpful. They're, we're all naturopathic doctors. Um, most of all, all of us have been in practice 12 plus years and, and have a lot of experience. Okay, great. Well, we just have a few more minutes. I was just going to go an hour. So if any last questions, yeah. and if if not, we can end a few minutes early again. Pretty, if you want to get in there, it's just dutchtest.com, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. dutchtest.com. Yeah. Everything on our website is free. You can go and poke around. All the videos are free. All the fact sheets and drop down boxes and everything where we answer a lot of questions. You don't have to be a signed up provider. Just Check it out. Please go for it. This is a question Sequoia is asking. I, know, I think you couldn't hear it while you're setting up. If, if somebody wants to get the 50% off their first five tests, do they have to buy them all at once or can they kind mm -hmm. of break it up? They can break it up. Okay. Yep. Good to know. Yep. Yeah, it is a little chunk of change when you buy it. Yeah. You know, and, and you don't have to buy five. Some people just choose to buy one and 
move on from there, just go right to patient ordering. Some people yeah. just buy requirement. It's just the max you can buy. Just an option. Can You can mm -hmm. use this for clients too, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Janine, yeah. I don't think there's a code for that. That's more, mm -hmm. that's a, if you actually have an account, I don't know. I, I think I did it by phone or how did I? Yeah. It? So when you, when you sign up, you're going to get an email. If you, when you sign up, if you, you know, put that you heard this on Bridget's podcast, our podcast, um, then you, we send you an email and it's, it's uh, I'm letting you know how to go about it. You, so there's no code. Okay. There's no code. Okay. So maybe the confusion was if you have a vendor account, your patient That's gets different. a code to have it get at a reduced rate. And, and yes. You don't get the five things Correct. unless you can finagle a doctor to help you <laughs> sign up for this. Go sign. <laughs> for yeah. And then you can get it on and off. Right. Yeah, yeah, but the then vendor code will generate with the directly with the the lab in customer service. We have somebody you'll talk to. Okay, okay. Yeah. She Ellen's saying the shelf life of the kits. As long as you don't get them wet, they can last for years. Okay. Because it's really just filter paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just filter yeah, paper. Judy, the replay will go out in two more hours, but mm, there's a short, <laughs> short. Short version, it's normally 250 for the Dutch Complete, mm -hmm. but your first five tests can be half off if you're a licensed provider. Let me see if I remember all these. The month-long sex hormone metabolites is 325. Is that right? And then to combine the it. two is 425 to combine the complete. You got it. Okay. Now, okay. we don't normally charge for you to, for pr your practitioners, your licensed practitioners to have the kits. So just like other companies, if you want to have 10 or 15 kits in your office to give patients, we just send you those for free. This is just the introductory sign up special bonus. If you want 50% off, that's when you have to prepay. Otherwise we just mail you the kits directly. And then when your patients send it back. Yeah. You normally don't have to buy the kits ahead. There's more mm -mm. free and the client no, pays. That's yeah. yeah, and but if you want to get the discount, Pat, you can mm -hmm. call it in or email it in and mention that you were listening on this thing with the hormones balance after 40. Um, Canadians, how do we ship? It's not prepaid, but it's very cheap to ship it, right? It's because it's just an envelope. It's not we, it, envelope. Is pre, it is oh, prepaid it is? For, can, for Canada. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, we do prepay for our Canadian buddies, yes. Yeah, okay. and it's super okay. easy. Um, honestly, no, it was you, it was the post office and maybe now it's UPS or we flip that either way. We, we have a very organized Canadian system for our, for our Canadians. So we mail it. No problem. That part is shipped and it's, you know, and then it's prepaid to mail back. Okay. Jana, I think she said, yeah, they can ship internationally. Um, yes, no problem for okay. UK practitioners. Absolutely. We do okay. it all the time. Nordic and DK. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Nordic. So like in the UK, we have a distributor. In the UK, our distributor is Regenerous and Nordic is our distributor in um, the Scandinavian countries. Oh, based gotcha. out of Denmark. Okay. Copenhagen. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. So that's all still through the main website and then you arrange the. Yes. And yeah, yeah, Sally, you can, you can ask me a direct question. So I'm going to Scandinavia in October with Nordic I'll be yeah, in the UK on Thursday. So, I, so I'll, I'm lecturing in, in London um, next week and then in Scandinavia with Nordic in October. So she said, I can't take your course. That's the course. So yes, you can email me directly. Oh, that's the course. That's why I didn't understand. Call the lab. Email the lab. They'll get it to me. I need a new job <laughs> with that chest. That's very interesting. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I think we got all the questions. Quay said, do you get the reviews if you're part of the group that is covered by a chiropractor? Yeah, you get, yeah. I think anyone in the group can can call it in. So if the chiropractor has the account, but you're the one running the test for the client, you can be the one calling. Is that right, Carrie? Yep, okay. yep. Because you're super, mm -hmm. they're yep. supervised by the yeah. chiropractor. Yeah, the okay. chiropractor just lists you as a person that, you know, I just add you to the account and it's no problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll take this one last from Carmen. How about to Australia and what's the turnaround time for the test? So if you, in Australia, our distributor there is Research Nutrition. They overnight it to us 
and then it takes the standard five to ten business days, and then all results are done over email. So okay, research okay. from Australia, it's overnighted to Portland, and then a week, and then we five send results on email. Results. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I said that would be the last, but there is one more good one, which is typical time frame for retesting. Oh, that's a great question. Depends on your patient. Um, four to six, three to six months. So if they're if they hit the three month mark and you are an amazing practitioner and every they feel great and everything's perfect, then say, hey, save some money. Let's go. Let's do it the six month mark. If you hit it the three to four month mark and they're like, well, I'm great but not perfect, or I think I need some tweaking, then do it then. Yeah, generally I'm like, let's not retest it. We think it'll be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I said the same thing. <laughs> or at least so, at least somewhat good. Because yeah, you don't want to see, yeah, see things not changing. It takes time. <laughs> it does. It, takes time. it took you a while, right? It took you a while. Your patience a while to become um, screwed up. <laughs> it's gonna take a, you know, it's gonna take a while to un unmess themselves. Yeah, a lot in my women's health. You know, I always tell people every month is is unit of one. It's yep. not, you know takes some units to get through to, to retest. Um, okay, true. great. I'm sure there's still more questions, but we got a lot. Um, we got a lot covered. Um, just going to have to figure out a way to go to Europe with Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And I, I go to Australia in, uh, in August, too. Oh, yes, it's, my gosh. It's a lot of travel. I have a lot of Delta airline points, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's a downside, I'm sure, to a yeah. lot of travel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, fun. thank you, Carrie. Really appreciate your time. Thank so you for hosting me. That's being a sponsor too of the summit. Yeah, it was a great partnership. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone thanks for attending. Me. There will be a replay. If you have questions, go to DutchTest.com. Go, call the yep. Call the lab. You, there's emails. You can email info at DutchTest.com. I N F O info at DutchTest.com, and oh. they can help absolutely and get it to the right people. Great. Like me. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye.